Hello, everyone, and let me welcome you all to the five. Today, we will be looking at just one concept, as you saw in the registration. And as I always do, I want to make sure that you hear me before I proceed. So please, if you are around, you can just let me know in the comments if you can hear me. Okay, then we can proceed. So let us quickly take a look at what we'll be looking at for today. Today we will only be looking at dictionaries. That is the only thing we'll be doing today. Yesterday we looked at the arrays, lists, and tuples, and sets. And today we are focusing on dictionaries, which is also another way to store um, information, or let me say data. And so a Python dictionary, unlike a list or a tuple, this one is an unordered collection of key value pairs. Uh, you will understand very soon what I mean by key value pairs. So what we call the keys, they act as unique labels and values, and the values also represent the data associated with those keys. So uh, let me, Put it this way. So you have a key value pair, just like a, a regular dictionary that has. You can the words as the keys and the definitions of those words as the values. So that is how the Python dictionary also works, if I should take it literally. And so unlike lists, you assess the elements in dictionaries by their keys and not their positions. So this makes them more flexible for storing and retrieving data based on meaningful identifiers. So we'll go ahead quickly and then look at an example. So this is an example of a Python dictionary. You see here that I have it named my dict. I have it named my dict. That is the name, so you can see that that's the variable name. And then we use the same curly brackets to represent dictionaries like we used for sets, but it's just the structure that is within that changes. So it looks just like set, but the structure within is different. We declare a single key. And then we bring this uh, colon. Let me zoom in. You declare the key, and then you separate the key from the value using the colon. So the key, uh, let me try and reduce the size of my marker. Okay. The key, and then the colon acts as the separator. Then the value also follows afterwards. Let me just underline it and be, and be safe. The value follows afterwards. And so let us get into Python and see how all of these things I'm saying work. Okay. I have my PyCharm open, so we can see it here. Let me try and, okay, we will take like five examples I prepared. Um, I'm hoping that those ones should be enough for you to understand it. So if we want something like a phone book, phone book, sorry, phone book. I said we use the same curly brackets like this. Usually you can type everything in one line, but in order for it to be readable, we kind of separate it. So let me just type the one liner, then I'll separate it afterwards so that you see the difference between the two. So in the case where our user is called Alice or the person in our contact is called Alice, this one becomes the key. And now I have to put a colon 
And then I give the value of Alice number. So let's just say it's just um, five by five, 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 like um, PyCharm is suggesting. I promise I'll not use it, but in this case, instead of me to guess numbers randomly, permit me to use it. So this one becomes a dictionary. If I zoom in onto phone book, like this, and I put my cursor on it, you see that PyCharm is telling me that it's a dict, which is the short form for a dictionary. Okay. And so this is the key value pair. So Alice here is the key. It has a value of this particular number. Okay. And then if I want to add another key value pair, I can, let me take a suggestion, but not me, let me not use the auto completion. Bob's number also, I just want to be suggesting that I use this. And so let me use it. This is a dictionary of two, you can say items or elements, but you can imagine if I have like 10 of these elements inside this dictionary, and now all of them should go up on a straight line. That will be a little hard to read. Python wouldn't have a problem with it. It will still work with it. However, we choose to format our code, but if you really want to make it readable, let me just get everything out of this. And then now, inside of those two brackets, I can just put my cursor in the middle of it like it, like now, and then I just press return or enter key. Automatically, any intelligent editor like PyCharm, VS Code also, should bring this one to um, a third line and then insert the cursor in between them for you. So now I can paste what I cut from that side, and then I can bring Bob also to a new line like this. Looks like Alice. So I have to now also press the tab key, the tab key to what we say indent it inside my code. So now this becomes more readable. And in the case where I want to add another person, uh, John Bob, okay, let me just add John. And then I can add John's number also like this. So if I have like 10, I can just keep on adding all of them uh, just like this. Okay, so what's, uh, how do we even get to use this dictionary? So now, how do I assess values from the dictionary? As I said, look at it like the regular dictionary you use for your word search, the definition of your words. So now, if I want to get a value of Alice, like if you want to get the meaning of a word in a dictionary, you open your dictionary to the place where the word can be found. And then using the meaning that has been given to the word, you now have uh, or obtain your meaning. So if I want to get the value of, say, Bob, I will have to use Bob's key, which in turn is Bob. So if I want to get the value of Bob, all I have to do is in a print statement, I can say phone book, which now calls the dictionary, the whole dictionary. And then just like we did for lists, I put my pair of square brackets. And then inside here, I'm expected to pass a key. And then I pass the key of Bob. It should be exactly what is inside here. Other than that, it will not work. So when I run this one now, it should give us the number of Bob, which uh, was so. So if I change this to Alice, it also gives me the number of Alice. So this one can be used to store like related data sets or uh, maybe you have a single entity and you have many attributes about that particular entity like uh, we can look at a person if you take a person you may take the person's name the person's height the person's uh, color the person's it, it can be so many things uh, depending on whichever context uh, you want to use it in and so if you can store all of them in a single item like a dictionary that makes it very convenient and clean to write. And so let us move ahead. 
and instead of the numbers example or the phone book example, let us take uh, something like an inventory. So I will go ahead and clear everything from here. Change this one's name to an inventory. And we of course will be printing from the inventory. For now, let me clear the print statement. So let's just see that uh, on our inventory, we have Apple and then the price. So we want to give the item and then the price. So the price is 10 units. And then there is also banana. Did I get it right? I don't think so. So pipe charm is yelling at me. Let me just take its suggestion. So it's just one end. And this one's to price is say five units. And then we can add something like an orange. The price of the orange also should be like say 10 units. We can add uh, more if you want to. So now you know that if I do something like print, then I call inventory and then pass in the key of banana. It will give me the value five. Here. Okay. But what if I want to programmatically add an item to my inventory dictionary? If I print my inventory like that, you should give me the dictionary the full dictionary. So you see that the full dictionary came to the terminal. Okay. If I want to add one more, let's say we want to um, add something like, what should we add? So we can say inventory, and then we can add a new key here. So let me just say, Okay, and then let's set that one equal to say 15 units. Okay, uh, this looks like, let me just run this one. I don't know that yesterday to this particular list came, PyCharm, tries to reformat the code for us based on some uh, algorithms that it uses at the background. But sometimes if I should take this reformatting, looks like it will try and then bring the pair in because it, it, it doesn't understand. I'm sure it doesn't understand why I should create it here. When I can just add it straightforward, why should I add it here? But that is the purpose of what I'm showing you now how to add a new item to your dictionary. So you see that initially the, value, uh, the contents were, or the elements or the members were apple, banana, and orange. But when I chose to say that inventory pair equal to 15, it added the pair to the dictionary. So when I printed the dictionary, like you see on line 11, I got all four inside here with their respective prices. Now, let me repeat this same line to line 10 and then go inventory. This time, let me take a key that already exists inside our dictionary. So I will take Apple. The original price is 10, but let's just hope, say that that is too expensive. So let's bring it to four and then see what will happen, whether it will add another Apple or it will update this one. You see that that did not add a new Apple. It rather updated the price here from 10 originally to four. So if you want to modify the values of a particular key, this is how you do it also. So we've looked at, uh, let me give comments here. This is adding a new item to our dictionary. And then this place should be updating a value 
using the key. I think it is because of my team, this color is not really showing well. Um, or maybe I should switch the lighting for the purpose of the stream. Let me see. But usually that is it's not so easy on the eye. It might make the stream nice, but that would be so harsh for me. That is, I'll have a lot of light coming in straight towards me like that. So please. Um, try and then manage it like this for me. Uh, the comments is what I'm worried whether you can see or not. Okay. So that is, um, it's about updating the key value pair. So we'll go ahead and take another example, which will also, um, maybe we can use this same thing for that purpose. Let's just see that we want to also update, but in this we, let's look at another way of updating it. That is what I'm trying to say. So if you say inventory, now let's pick something like banana. And then let's say plus equal to five. I know this is the first time we are seeing this class equal to 10. So I forgot to mention it during the operators lecture, but if you see class equal to in programming, um, in, Python, uh, in Python like we are using, uh, what it's trying to say is that whatever the value of the left side is, like in this case, so whatever inventory banana will evaluate to, which is five at the top. Because you see banana here is five. So banana's value is five. So what this particular line 11 means is that whatever the value of this left side will evaluate to, which is five in our case, take it and then add five to it. So this plus equal to five, means add five to the already existing value. Um, maybe you'll be wondering why didn't it, why did it use just plus and um, plus equal to? Well, that is we want to keep the old state and then still add five to it without changing the variable name. So that is how we do it in programming. It takes the old, the old state as a new value to it and still stores the new value in the old state. So we don't uh, have multiple stuff in there. And even for a dictionary, you can't even have duplicate keys. If I try to add another key called Apple, and then let me give it 35 for now. There are some underlines here, but if I zoom in a bit, you will see that the colors are different for the apples. If I hover over one of them now, it says dictionary contains duplicate keys, and it tells us the duplicate keys are Apple. And PyCharm suggests that I remove this key. And so the dictionary cannot contain duplicate keys. Just like in a dictionary for your word uh, meaning search, you will not have the same word appearing twice, probably with different meaning or something. If, if the word has multiple meanings, Fine. It will just the word will just appear one in the dictionary, once in the dictionary, and then the meanings will be listed one, two, three, four, like that. They will not just put it the same word repeatedly. In the same way, if I want to give more than one key or more than one value, that one is also possible. I can now give a key here like others. And then this others can be a list of other items I can put in here. Maybe one, I can put true. I'm just putting in some things to let you know that you can put anything here. It can be anything here. So if you have a key that does not have a single value, but an array or multiple instances of its value, you can just put all of them in a list or in a tuple 
or even another dictionary. This one itself can be another dictionary also. Yes. So let me get that one off. There will be an example that will explain all those things carefully. So back to our other method of updating. If this works correctly, then the price of banana should be 10. So let's print it out and see. And we can see from the terminal here that banana is now 10. So that is also another way of updating things in the dictionary. What this one did was that it took away the old one, which was 10, and replaced it with a new one. But this one, because we are using the plus equal to, it didn't take away the five to replace it with another five. It's, okay, let me just change this one to one so that what I'm explaining now will make sense. For the apple, when we are updating it on line 10, because it's just an equal sign, it means that replace the old one with the new one. That is why the new one came as four. But for the, inver the banana, we told it that update the old one, keep it, which is five, and add this one to it. That is why it gave us six here and not one, because of this plus equal to. I just hope that part is not confusing. Okay. And now let's um, see. So in the case where we have like the entity that I was talking about. Let me clear everything from this side. Okay. Collapse this place for more space also. Let me monitor and see if there are any questions. No questions, okay. So let's just say there's a movie or something like that. So, for a movie, if we want to create a dictionary for it, it's suggesting that uh, I put a title, which of course I will do, but I will not click on the auto complete. It's even suggesting the movie title for me, but I will not do that one. I think, uh, let me see, dark reckoning. Was it a part one that was released not long ago? Part one. I think I have a mistake with this. And um, yep. So that record in part one. And then we can go ahead and say the year of the movie. Sorry. That was last year, so that was uh, 2023. Uh, I actually don't remember the director. I don't, I don't, I don't. But let's just take the year and then this one. Why are we getting this error? It says I should introduce a variable for the statement. This shouldn't be so. Oh, okay, 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 okay. There is an error here which should not happen because I, I didn't put a comma here. So the key value pairs are separated by commas. When I put the comma here, immediately that one will go. Um, please, let me see. Please give me one minute. I want to get the statistics right. So let me just copy this title and search for it and then get more keys to do the explanation. Okay, so the director, I've gotten the director's name. Let me just copy it from the other screen and bring it. The director was this person. And then other things we can add. Let me just copy all of them here and then bring them in. So we we'll just create keys and values for each of them. Release date. 
In fact, I can just put space because this is just a, this is a string, so that will not be a problem. And that was this one should be a string, so twelve. Or it says December twenty twenty three. We can just put it in there. December twenty twenty three. And then the Jean is venture trailer. So for a genre like this, we can give it a list and just say adventure. And then the other one. Okay. I forgot the comma here again. Now these ones are not needed. Adventure. Forgive my typos today. This one, that is how the name is. Uh, even if PyCharm is complaining, I don't have to change it. So now this one becomes an entity. If I want to, I can print movie, you know that one will happen. Uh, it will just give us everything that is in here. So now I can work with this any way I want to and access each of the va uh, values in there. So, Let's just see some workarounds that we can do. Okay, so let me see. Print, movie, and then I'll want to print, because the genre is a list, let me just look at how I can access the elements that are inside here just one of the elements. So in that case, I'll pass in the key. And then I'll pass in another square bracket because I, I want to now assess what is inside this, which I know that is also a list. If you remember from yesterday, if I want to access any member of an array, like a list, I will have to put in the index here. So if I access the zero element, so to speak, and I run, I should see adventure on my screen. If I change this to minus one, you know from yesterday that that will print the last item for me. Okay, so now let's just say we want to construct a sentence with the elements inside here. So building upon what you have already learned from the standard output format, uh, I will try and construct a sentence. Let me check if there are no comments. So now I can say, my sentence, and that will be a string. And then let me just say, but I'll, I'll choose the F string here. That is my favorite output format. So the title of the movie is, and then I can plug in movie, sorry, and then access the title. Okay. And yes, I am glad this one has happened. What I've done here is right, based on what you have done so far. But we still have a, a red underline here. Let's just zoom in and see what it tells us. It's saying Python version 3.9 does not allow nesting of string literals with the same code type inside F strings.
uh, I, I, the error will be from my side. Um, I'm very sure. The stream just went off, so I brought it back again. Sorry about that. I don't really know where it went off. But let me just try and then um, take it from this sentence side again. I'm just hoping that you, even if it went off before I did this, uh, so if this one is new on your screen, I'm, I, just, I know you understand it because there's a key value pair like we have been discussing and all that. So I want to construct a sentence now. Okay, based on the feedback, I want to ask, is it that the stream has paused like as I speak now or make movements on my screen, you don't see it at your end or oh, everything is okay now because I'm trying to now zoom in and out. Let me know whether everything is smooth. Please, is everything smooth? Like, can you see the gestures flawlessly and also hear my voice? I really appreciate the feedback. If I have to refresh my network, then I do that. Okay, thank you. So, so this is our dictionary, which we want to use to construct a sentence. So I declare another variable here called my sentence. And then I can open my, my pair of single quotes and say, sorry, the title of the movie is, and then in here, uh, let me convert it to an F string. And then I can say movie, open my quotes, and then say title. Okay. And you can see from my code that as far as we have discussed, it is correct. Because a string should be defined between a pair of quotes, whether single or double. But there's still some red line here. So let me just zoom in and see what Python is telling us. It says Python version 3.9 does not allow nesting of string literals with the same code type. So that means that the type of our codes is the same. They are all single. So I'm trying to use single codes inside single codes. This usually happens when sentences that uh, usually also have quotes uh, in them happen like a sentence like, I don't say like it. If I construct a sentence like this, I can say that this is a string because this is my starting quote, this is my ending quote. But still, there is a problem here. In fact, what is happening here is that Python thinks that because this one and this one, so the first one and the last, uh, the, the, the one just before the T are the same, it is thinking that our string terminated here. Meanwhile, we actually intend that it ends at it. So before we can get this one to really work without error, there are two ways to go about it. The first way is that one of them should be different. So is that we choose to give a double quote to this side 
which takes the error away. But we know that for something like this, it is very wrong in, in English to put a double quote here. So the single quote should rather be here. So in that case, the double quote will rather end and begin like this. And then the arrow goes away. So if you want to nest quotes inside uh, quotes, then they should be different. And so that is what Python is trying to tell us at this side. So for this side, because I can maintain the single quotes outside, I will go ahead and then change these ones to double quotes, and then this error should go away. So I'll continue with my sentence. The title of the movie is, and because of the, the length of the sentence, I will try and break it down. Or maybe I will show you a very, another concept in programming here also. We call it escape character. So if I want to now print a new line, Usually, you know, in the first day, I taught you how to do the printing for your poem. You had multiple print statements, each on a new line with a sentence inside. And that is how we achieve the new line. But there is another a, a way to do that programmatically, and that is to bring backslash n. However, Python sees this backslash n, it will know that it has to go on a new line. So I, if I continue this my sentence here and say, and it was released in, and it sets another one here, say movies, the movie, sorry. Then I can access the year from here. So is it year? Okay, let me try and zoom out. I know you may not see the text, but it's just for a moment. Now, my sentence is this full sentence. If I print this, my sentence to the terminal, you see that up here, it is one long sentence. But here it is broken down into two lines. And that is because I place the backslash n here. So wherever Python sees the backslash n, it will go to the new line and continue with the rest of the statements. And that is what we are seeing here. So if you want to achieve new lines in your code instead of multiple print statements, you can construct all of it in one long sentence and then a one long string and then put backslash n wherever you want to see a new line coming. You have seen that if I do it in a long stretch, it will work, but it is more cleaner to bring it to a new line. So what I just did was, having my cursor here after the backslash n, I'll just press return or enter. It will bring it to a new line for me. Uh, at this place, if I want to come to the new line, I can just press return or enter. It will continue creating uh, multiple lines, but these are all part of one big string, one big F string. Even though we are finding F on each line, but it, it doesn't mean that it's different um, F strings that are in this my sentence. It's just one, just that it is formatting it on um, multiple lines so that we can write and read clearly. It was released in 2023. I didn't bring a backslash in here. And so let me just leave that to show you something. And I see, and the specific release date, release date uh, was, or is it, it should, it should it be is or was, whatever, so I can go movies and then assess release date oh sorry it's supposed to be movie i keep on typing movies okay now this is my string 
if I print it, this line I've highlighted now is supposed to come to a new line if you if we just look at our code here and then pretend that what we see is what we will get. But let's just run it and see. Uh, what is okay? A very important error has occurred. If I zoom in, it says key error. And the key here that is causing the error is release date. That means I have tried to call a particular, the value of a particular item whose key doesn't exist. So let me go up. You see here, I left a space in between the release and the date. But when I was calling for it, I forgot and I brought the underscore. So that is what is causing the problem. If I delete this underscore and replace it with a space, now I shouldn't get this error. Yes, exit code is zero. You see that even though this line here and the release and it was released in the year, this is what is here. It was released in this year. But according to our code, this and which for, uh, has the specific release date should have started on a new line, but it is also continuing this one here. And that is because this style that we are using here is just a formatting style. It's, this thing has nothing to do with the output. It's just formatting. The only thing that will affect the output is if we intentionally put the backslash n where we want to get a new line. So I can either put it in front here or at the end here. So let me put it at the end here. And then now when I run it, it will break them into new lines even as I see it in my code. So don't confuse the formatting with what the output should be. I can continue this sentence and type in all the things I want to do but I believe you get what I'm trying to explain here. We can get the keys by this and then use it in our code any way we want to. In my case, it was to construct a sentence. Maybe in your case, where we use the inventories, you'll be using the prices to calculate the total that the buyer has to pay, or you can be using it to compute some percentages, whatever thing you want to use them for. They are data types, uh, and so we can use any of them for any operation you want to do uh, using the operators that we learned the last time. Okay, so now let us look at some methods that we can run on dictionaries. When we we're doing the list and code, we looked at some methods that we can run on dictionaries. So let me delete the sentence, but we still maintain this particular dictionary. If I want to get all the keys here, I can say print, and then I can say movie dot keys. But I'll have to, don't forget the open and close. It's a function, so just look at it like it's a function. And that function that is bound to the dictionary, it will return the keys for us. You remember the, function like is this joint, is subset, the one which we used yesterday for the set, or the len and the append, they all had this round brackets. So this one, we have to bring it. If I run this code now, you see that it gives me, uh, a part, as part of the things I see here, like date keys, which it just means that the dictionary is keys, but I see that inside, that date keys, there is a list of all the keys that are in my dictionary. So if I want to straight away convert it to a list without having to see this date keys, I can now, instead of the print statement, first bring a list here before I, I insert the movies.keys. So if you remember type conversion, where we could convert from one number format to the other just by using int or float, or even convert a string that looks like a number to an actual number using int or float. When we pass anything to a list to, provided it looks like a list, like in our case, it will convert it to a list for us. So let us run it and see. Now it comes 
but uh, the my dict is gone so giving us only a list that we can manipulate in any way that we want okay so once there are dot keys you can also guess correctly that there are dot values also so let me run that one too and see what it will give us that one too gives us all the values of the dictionary so you see that it started from dark reckoning here and then goes to the author uh, the director sorry so this is the first one then it goes to the director followed by the year and then the release date uh, which continues down here and then the, the the genre also so just in the order in which they appear if you use the dot values that one too will give you all the values of your dictionary If uh, there's also one called movie.items. Let me see. Okay, no, no comments. Movie.items. What that one will do is that it will return all the key value pairs as a tuple. So let's run it and see. Um, okay, it looks looks a little cryptic on the screen. And that is because it's not well formatted. Uh, if I want to really format this well, I will have to go ahead of our, our timeline and then do something that you may not have seen before. Okay. But you let me do it. If you are following this type along, when we get there inside loops, I will explain it to you. I can say for, say item in movie, dot items sorry print and then i'll pass in item sorry so this place i'll just comment this one out so i know that it returns a uh, it's a list and inside that list there are two posts and that is why i want to make it more readable for you to see so this one we have not gotten there yet, but it's also another syntax in Python called a loop that we can use to iterate over any form of iterable like what you have down here. So even before I run the code, let's just inspect what is down there. Dict items, we know that this one, it came first with the dict keys and the values and we took it off by casting it to a list. So if I should even go ahead and then comment this one for now and then uncomment this, but first cast this to a list, you know that to get rid of that uh, date keys for us. So a list. And then now that date keys is gone. But if you look carefully inside the list that we have now, you see that there is a title and then the actual title, but I think I underlined what, uh, this title here, which ends here with this comma. We see the key, which is title, and then the value also here. But in this time around, they are not separated by colon like we declare them in a dictionary. They are separated by commas. So it returns it, and then each of this tuple corresponds to a key value pair. So from all this green that I've underlined, uh, goes for, I have to escape it. It goes for the title. So the value first inside the tuple, the key story first inside the tuple, followed by the value separated by a comma. And then it goes to director, which, is also, which also has its own tuple here, starting here and ending here the key then the value follows so that is how it's uh, the dot items to bring it for us and so if i should go ahead and run this particular piece of code which i will explain further when we get to loops if you are following you can just type it and then get exactly what i'm getting so that one formats it better for us visually that is only the only thing i wanted to achieve the formatting
So each of them is inside a tuple, like you can see now clearly, and are separated by commas, the key and value pairs. Okay, so that is also one of the methods on the dictionary. And if I want to get the value of a particular key also, there is, uh, apart from the one I showed you before, so this part, I don't need it now. Apart from the one I showed you before, which was print, and then I can pass in movie, and then, sorry, in here, passing the particular key, like the genre, this one will get me the value here. But I can also use the dot get, so I can just say movie dot get, and then I pass in the key here. I want to do exactly like the first one. See that one too also brought me this. So that is also one way of uh, getting it. And there is one also called pop, which will work exactly like the get, but the difference between pop and get is that the pop retains the value. I don't really know. And so how do I, because I don't want to step ahead of the shadow. But if I'm using pop, that means that I need the value somewhere to use it. So I can now say value equal to, and then movie.pop. In that case, if I print value, I'll get the value that this one returns, which is this. But I think the get to should work the same way. Yes, in, in any case, they all work, but what the pop does is if the documentation will do the better job, return the key for a value if the dictionary, if it's in the dictionary. Now let's check the pop. The pop kind of pops it out and then returns the value to the particular variable that is looking for it. It says remove specified key and return the corresponding value. This one stays here explicitly that it returns it. But you know that get the this state that it returns it. So you see, okay, it also returns the value. But I think this one's return is a bit different. Okay, this one removes it. So it's like you have a box of items and then you just pop something out. Uh, I don't know which way to use for the pop in place of the pop. Let's print our dictionary after we pop it out and see. Movie. Okay. If you look at our dictionary here, I think now I've gotten a better way to explain the pop. You look at our dictionary here. You see that now it's only the title, director, year, and release date. The genre is gone. Because we have popped it out. Like we have taken it out of it. It's not part of it again. But let's use get and see. When we use get, we still got the value printed down here anyway, but now our genre is still in our dictionary. So I believe this should explain the difference between pop and then get. One pops it out, uh, that is take it away completely and returns it to you. So it takes it completely away from the dictionary and returns it to you. And then this get will actually only return it and still maintain it in the dictionary for you. So that is the difference between the two. Are there any comments? Okay, no. Okay, so I think there's another one. Yeah, that, I think that should be all for now. That should be all for now. Uh, if you put your a dot after it, like I said, you can see that there are a lot. I cannot go through all of them. So it is your job to do a quick Google search on this one. So we've gone through items, values, get, pop, keys. You can look at the clear copy and all those ones to what they do. And I think I should restructure the, I should structure the assignment such that 
it will make you do the research like that. Okay, so I think that will close the chapter on dictionaries if there are no questions. So as I always do, let me give like a minute or two. If there are questions, I address them on air. If not, then we can bring the stream to an end and anticipate for the next day. Okay, I suppose there are no questions. So thank you very much for your time today. I still encourage you to keep practicing when you watch. Maybe you have to rewatch the upload and even rewatch it again. As many times as you have to watch it, practice and understand, please do. Because as we go along, we build upon concepts so that you don't get confused. And the only way to know this thing is to practice and practice daily if you can. Okay, no questions. That will be all for today. I'll see you tomorrow for day six. Bye for now. One question, comments. Okay. The pleasure is mine. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.